There he is. Wait a minute. So I'm seeing you. Are you seeing me? I am seeing you and hearing you. So I'm trying to read your lips at this point. Oh, you, you can't hear me? <laughs> yeah. uh, wait a minute. Let me see. Oh, that thing is on. You see the audio on the computer. You know, usually you get, okay, let's try that. Right. Yeah. Okay, I've got audio up on my end. Okay, good. Oh. So I think we're good to go. I hear you. You hear me. You wear yeah. glasses. I wear glasses. <laughs> We have a couple of grays. We've lost some follicles. I've lost several follicles, Howard. So where are you at now? What where, where city are you in? Okay. Uh, is this the official start? Oh, yeah. I just, it's so informal, Howard. So, yeah. So is there video of me as part of this? I, I will grab some pictures uh, off of uh, sites and plug them in. Uh, oh, you lay you it over. Vid- yeah. If you have video. Yeah. I, I, it's like the one I did with uh, Mark Viviano. Um, I recorded it. Mark Viviano. Yeah, you know. Anyway, so I... Let me me just close the door. Hold on one second. Yeah, yeah. Right back. We well, go. at least you, at least you had pants on, because wasn't there a guy that got in trouble recently for uh, being in a company Zoom meeting and got up? <laughs> no, I think there was. I think it was. Uh, it was. Um, here, wait a minute. I got my underwear over here. I was folding. Uh, let me see. No, I think it was um, Tubin. That's right, uh, Jeffrey yeah. Tubin of uh, CNN fame. Uh, yeah. notoriety, and That's he was right. touching himself inappropriately. <laughs> and didn't realize well maybe i should uh remove that camera lens yeah you know it wasn't very uh okay wait a minute all right so we don't need to uh wait a minute. no you just you let's just chat it's a it's a casual conversation and uh uh you, you your screen all i'm seeing is your eyes i'm seeing oh, okay. just your eyes that's, oh, that's tell me right there that good yeah. Let me get the perfect. stupid phone. Most of the times it's someone who wants my money and I don't want to give it to them. So hold on. You do what you got to do. Okay. So if it rings, I'll just hang up if I don't recognize anybody who's important. So now I got everything. Okay. So, so where, where are you at? Where, what city do you live in? Right now we are, um, wife and I live in Aurora, Colorado, mm-hmm. which is uh, just to the east of some small cow town called Denver. And I say Cowtown because um, Denver has that notoriety of having had lots of cows travel through uh, in its uh, earlier days. Um, now it's uh, pretty much an advanced city. Uh, so it's not like the 1800s. Right. Uh, they still have a uh, Western stock show of animals um, uh, in, these, uh, in these here parts. But you're not from there, though, right? Originally, oh, no. you're from. I'm yeah. from Queens, New York. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Or as we like to say, what you got a problem with that? <laughs> Something you want to say? Yeah, yeah that's right. Now, uh, are you in television now? You, you're working in television no. right now. No, let let me uh, let me give you the uh, shocker. Um, uh, some uh, of our uh, former mutual colleagues. Uh, know what had happened to me. And uh, what had happened was if I had, if I had had this discussion with you in, let's say 2018, 2019, and I still have to hold it back, I I would be on the verge of tears. Uh, I almost died in 2017. Yeah, I I know that's true. Uh, And so I'm in the, in the process of uh, finishing up a book about what had happened to me. And my title is because I was writing shorthand in an old uh, composition notebook, right. uh, BS, BS and BS. Now that doesn't stand for what you might think it would stand for, but the title is I had BS and it is not what you think. The BS stands for, and you can have dramatic impact, brain surgery. Wow. Yeah. I know. So wow. it, was, was there a, a tumor involved? What, yes. Tell me. Yeah, yes. Give me what some... happened was um, uh, I had uh, I had a colloid cyst. The colloid cyst uh, grew uh, on my brain 
And then what it does is it's a condition called hydrocephalus. And that interrupts the proper flow of fluids within the spinal column. And as a result, uh, it leads to a number of ill effects. You get to be a little clumsy. Um, and, you know, we all have that self-edit button, the one that says, shut up, don't say what you're thinking, shut up, don't talk. And what had happened was uh, I was working for CBS Ford Denver and uh, there was going to be a meeting um, in which, uh, because there had been a reporter who uh, used the N word and then a producer flagged it. The, the reporter thought he was using it in proper context and this was a couple of summers ago. Well, let's see. So this was, I think, summer of 2016. And there was some social upheaval going on. And as a result, uh, someone uh, used the N-word to him, and he thought it was acceptable to use it as part of his intro on a live shot. It got flagged, and then it got reported to uh, the news director, and it went up the chain of the CBS Corporation, and they brought in... Uh, they brought in a corporate lawyer out of San Francisco. Everybody in the station had to gather and uh, everybody was going to be reminded, uh, you know, we all have sensitivities. Let's be careful with what we say to one another and how we phrase it, so on and so forth. Well, just be careful what you're saying before you say it. So we're waiting in the morning editorial meeting and I was a freelance reporter. Molly Hughes, you remember, uh, yeah. she, she uh, was my entree into being able to get some part-time work. And I worked uh, mostly weekends and I filled in here and there. And I was working uh, three, four days a week as a reporter. And so uh, while waiting for this meeting to begin uh, elsewhere within uh, CBS4, uh, there was a, there's a list of there was a list of reporters for the day who would be available. And so I was going down the list. I was looking at it and, and I didn't have my self edit button going, uh, working properly because uh, the hydrocephalus, one of the um, symptoms of it is that uh, you don't think before you speak. So I was looking down the list and I was looking at uh, female names. I said, female, female, female and that was taken as being sexist and and then there was another guy who uh and just before the meeting uh there was a guy who uh who had come to terms with his sexuality and so uh there were two photographers who were, who were commenting to one commenting to one another and i walked happened to just walk by them it wasn't really part of the conversation and they were talking about this guy and said well, what are we the gay station now so it was, you know, it was, it was, it was outside of that meeting. And so uh, I took that little piece of information into the meeting. And so on the list of reporters at the hap that day, it happened to be uh, mostly women. And I was in the meeting and again, you list who's available for the assignments desk. Mm. And then uh, also uh, that one uh, male reporter who had recently come to terms with his sexuality. And so I said, oh, then there's this guy, this guy, he doesn't know what he is. Now, also in the meeting, compounding the problem, and I didn't know this until after the fact, was that one of the producers, a guy also, uh, he's uh, uh, homosexual as well. So after the meeting and after the uh, gathering uh, with the uh, corporate attorney who had flew in from San Francisco, the news director says, uh, come into my office, which is not always a good thing. <laughs> no, no, it's not. <laughs> and uh, the, the office then probably still now um, is glass because the news director can see what's going on. Um, and what he did was uh, he says, come in. Did you say this and that? Did you? And I said, well, geez, I, I, I didn't mean to be insulting to anybody. I'll certainly go and apologize. I, I didn't know. Uh, it wasn't my intent. And uh, 
the meeting ended, I, I apologized to the guy, uh, the producer, um, the, the male producer, and he just stared straight ahead. He didn't say anything back to me. I went back to my desk. I did my duty for the day. And then I get a call the next day from the news director. I want you to come back downtown, which is like a 30, 40 minute ride, uh, fight through traffic, I'm thinking, and turn in your pass to get into the building. So I was fired. And this happened about September 1st of 2016. Okay. Now, was that that's your, you, because you've been in television. I've been, been in television. television a long time. Is that your first time getting fired? Because, uh, you know, as 30, Carl Bay used to say, you're hired to be fired in this business. Oh, yeah. 30 years in television. 30 years in television. And it all came down to a, a, a crashing in. And we all want to go out in our work lives the way we want to go out in our work right. lives. Right. You know? Yeah. Uh, when, we're, when we're ready to leave, we want to leave when we're ready to leave. Yeah. Uh, so I thought, well, the heck with this. You don't want me anymore. I'm not going to go drive downtown. There was a, a, a colleague from uh, CBS4 who lived in a next door neighborhood. So I just turned in my equipment, my jacket, uh, <laughs> the logo jacket. I turned that into him. I gave him my pass to get into the building properly. Uh, and that was it. Um, and he had some of my things that I had at a desk. So that was that. Um, so what had happened was the summer of 2016, and this is a, a chapter of this book that I, that I mentioned that I'm writing. Um, and the chapter is weird. And when I think back to what had happened, again, you start losing uh, some semblance of balance. That's part of it. And, uh, and I'd always been a, I've been a, a, a not a clumsy guy, not a klutz, somewhat athletic, uh, and a, a, a decent skier. And I got even better skiing uh, here in Colorado. Um, and I was skiing with my next door neighbor, Buddy, who uh, had been a ski instructor at Winter Park, Colorado. Uh, and what happened was we were on level terrain, got off a chairlift, and we're moving, making our way over to uh, get onto a chair to get up to a uh, higher ground. And what had happened was uh, I, I had this weird sensation that I was, that, that I was sort of like when you're on a roller coaster, you're at the peak and then all of a sudden you zoom right down. Mm -hmm. What had happened then was I thought, Oh geez, this is weird. So I'm, I'm, I'm cross country type skiing at that point. I widened my stance so I wasn't going to fall. He's ahead of me. I catch up and I didn't say anything because I thought, what? I don't know what the hell that was. I thought for a moment, I thought, well, maybe that was uh, because we were at altitude, uh, like at uh, 10,000 feet. And maybe I was getting a little uh, altitude impact. So mm -hmm. I, didn't, I, I brushed it off. I didn't think anything about it. Then later in the summer, uh, I was on the highway and I was driving. I was seated and I went down the uh, on-ramp to get onto a highway and had the same weird sensation. I'm at the peak of a roller coaster, then I'm swooshing down to the bottom. And I thought, and I'm driving and I'm thinking, geez, if this happens again, I better pull off. I don't want to get into an accident. I don't want to hit anybody. Um, I get into work and you get into your work mode. And then on another occasion, I'm climbing up, uh, I'm walking up a uh, flight of stairs at, at the end of uh, working uh, out in the field. Um, I, have, I had food in my hand. I had, uh, you know, garbage TV reporter food that you have to sometimes grab That's quickly. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I had the uh, diskette for the video. And uh, I thought, well, maybe I just... I just hit a step wrong. You know, sometimes you don't quite pick your feet up properly. Yeah. And I'll go back to that pick your feet up properly thing. And all of a sudden, everything went flying. Uh, some French fries <laughs> went this way and that. Uh, my sandwich, uh, my clipboard with my notes and my the, the video disc. 
uh, oh, I gathered stuff and I was just walking right past the assistant news director and she let out an audible gasp. Woo! You know, what happened? Mm. So uh, I gathered my stuff, went to my desk, worked on my story, went home. Uh, and, and I talked about picking up my feet. Uh, again, you start losing some physical mobility uh, uh, senses or abilities. And my, my wife and I, we would typically uh, go take a walk, you know, walk around the neighborhood. And she would say to me, pick up your feet. Go, what do you mean pick up my, I'm walking just fine. What do you, what do you, and what happened was I was uh, shuffling like an old man and neighbors said, what's wrong with Howard? He looks like he's, he's walking like an old man. Uh, so she says, look, go to the doctor and have him look into it. Now, when you're told to do something and you're concentrating on it, mm -hmm. my, he's okay. Walk for me. I walked. My gait was fine. No problem. Um, and, uh, then the other thing is that, uh, one of the things you start doing is you start losing bladder control. And it's pretty damn disgusting when you're walking around the neighborhood and you're thinking, no, I can get home. I, I don't, I, I won't pee. And, uh, and I should have stopped at a McDonald's and relieved my bladder. Mm -hmm. And what had happened was um, I walked past a school and there was this sort of this uh, low utility box. And I'm thinking, do I have time to get home? No, I don't think so. I better really, and I hate doing that, you know, uh, relieving myself out in public. Right. So uh, there was this um, like four foot tall utility box and I went behind it. And I saw, okay, there's a house over there. I hope that they're not on their porch. Let me uh, get rid of my stream. And uh, then a cop shows up. Oh, my goodness. And this was from the uh, nearby uh, middle school. Wow. And, and he says, what are you doing? You know, and he's, he's checking it out. And so I played grumpy old man. I said, well, you know, you get a little older. And uh, sometimes, you know, uh, you'll get older someday, too, and you got to relieve yourself. I didn't want to do that, but I'm too far away from home. Wow. And so he uh, he said, OK, and he went about my business. And then on another occasion, uh, again, walking with my wife, we, we went to uh, we were at the corner. Now we have a, a cluster mailbox. Uh, the mail doesn't get dropped off individually at the house. Uh, you have to go to a, a mailbox right by the corner. And so I relieved myself and she says, what, what just happened? And I didn't know. I had no understanding or explanation for what wow. the heck was going on with me. So are you, is there like right now, are there treatments for you that you go? Through? No, I, I'm fine. I'm fine. Are I'm you? Fine. I, but I'll tell you what, but I'll just move this up a little forward. So again, a lot of this was happening uh, last quarter of uh, 2016. Mm-hmm. And um, summer of 2016, and again, January 2016 is when that first inkling while skiing, that something was brewing. And then uh, in March 10th of 2017, I collapsed on the sidewalk. And fortunately, uh, <laughs> a light was red. A couple, and a very nice couple was looking to make a left-hand turn and uh, but because the light was red, they had to wait and they saw me collapse. <laughs> you know. wow. So what, what happens is they, they say, well, do you want, want us to take you to urgent care? And I said, no, no, I just want to go home. And wow. so they packed me in the car. I have no recollection of this. None. Oh, my goodness. So uh, fortunately, uh, this was like a Friday afternoon, like four ish in the afternoon. And my wife had an evening event to attend and she came home a little earlier. She sees this uh, unfamiliar car parked uh, in the driveway and she sees me stumbling out. I'm disoriented. I couldn't get into the house because I couldn't remember the punch code for the garage to get into the oh my garage and then get into the door between the garage and then into the house. So uh, <laughs> I wound up... Uh, <laughs> She wound up taking me, uh, so she calls up uh, the HMO, Kaiser Permanente, and she says, should I take him to urgent care? No, 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 take him to a hospital. 
So MRI is done. And <clears throat> sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and what happens is doctor sees, they, they see this cyst that's sitting on my brain, interrupting proper fluids within the, the skull. And what happens then is uh, she said, he says to my wife and I, and I have no recollection of this conversation. She tells me about this later. And he says, well, if we don't take this out, he might fall into a coma. Mm. Now, at that point, <laughs> she says that I screamed, no, take it out, take it, get rid of it, take it out, something along those lines. Right. So the next day, surgery, it's gone. Now, um, what I'll try and send to you, by the way, uh, is a picture of me two days after the surgery um, at uh, St. Joseph's Hospital in Denver. And what happens is uh, I have no recollection this picture has been taken by my brother-in-law's wife. And uh, they live here. It was one of the reasons I wanted to have our, our daughters have some cousins and uh, because I thought that was something missing from our lives when we were in Dayton. So what happens is uh, she takes the picture. I'm in this hot, I only learned about this picture months later. Uh, she, um, there's this entire week. Now, you know, if you have a major operation, you're going to remember the events leading up to it and right after it. I have no recollection for this one adult week of my life. Wow. Uh, in ICU because wow. I'm, I'm in ICU. And from there, then I go to um, a, a rehab hospital called Spalding. So I had one week at St. Joseph's and then uh, four weeks at Spalding in Aurora. The uh, first time I had any sense that uh, of being awake and aware of my surroundings I'm on a gurney and I'm being wheeled into an ambulance. The ambulance is taking me from St. Joseph's to Spalding, where I'm then going to spend four weeks uh, trying to regain my wits. So, uh, <laughs> and, and, wow. uh, yeah, I, I, I know this is probably uh, quite a surprise that I'm telling you all this. So I mean I know you got well, me and, and I, I had I had no idea I I, I I had no earthly idea so uh, like right now you're fine everything oh, yeah. is good wow what a story Howard that's um certainly that changes your your life your perspective oh, yeah. uh, you know as you know I'm a two time cancer survivor so I have a different perspective on things um, is there any inclination to go back into television or you're like i'm so done with that i've got other things i want to accomplish because now you know the uh how life works mm -hmm. uh so uh, uh i tried getting back into tv uh i'm now 62 so let's say uh at 59 or 60 uh put a little shoe polish if you will on the hair uh, I, I still have a decent, good set of follicles up there, uh, you know, uh, so, uh, I worked with my, uh, my agent, uh, but you know, time has passed me by is, is really the way to look at it. Yeah. And so are you, uh, uh, let, let's, we, we have just a couple of minutes left. I, I want to touch base on how, how you came to Dayton. How did that Oh, because um, I'm trying. I started in '85, and I can't recall when I first remembered you, but I remember working with you when I came yeah. over to '90. So uh, 1990. Okay. okay. Uh, I had uh, four years in Terre Haute, Indiana, and then um, uh, Dave Roberts, the news director at the time, uh, hired me. Uh, I had weekend anchoring experience, so I was comfortable on the desk. And that morphed into doing the turn to two thing because it was often a, a vehicle for having the reporter who was doing the turn to two solve your problem or. Yeah. Uh, and, and you had a huge 
impact uh, Thank you. With, with Turn to Two. It was one of those things that people tuned in specifically to see, yeah. um, which I, I should point out is, is rather rare in television, as you know, because usually they say people tune in for weather, uh, people tune in for the major headlines, but right. people would find out when your segment was going to be on. And I, I just remember I was at uh, across town at another station when I first encountered you and you were like a bulldog in finding solutions or finding answers. And it was amazing uh, that tenacity that you brought to it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, you know, it was, um, uh, I always like to think that uh, I was hopefully being wise. And when someone needed to uh, get that camera put on them, uh, that I think we made some good decisions. Um, was there ever a time you were afraid? You were like, oh, I might have just um, approached the wrong person here. N no, um, it always helps to have a big photographer next to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we both uh, have been around some of those guys, right? You know, uh, I, I mean, I remember there's one story, uh, you know, uh, this this one guy, uh, uh, people were complaining about him because uh, he wouldn't cut. He would cut down their trees, but he would leave the stump. You know, and so the story was he would leave people stumped. <laughs> you know, so and, and, and this guy had been on my radar. I get a complaint about this guy. And, and then. Um, and then uh, he would come back, another complaint, and the BBB would say, uh, tree cutters, got to watch out for them or something like that. I said, yeah, I know, you know, because I, I know this guy. And uh, so this woman who was uh, who had lost some money to him because he didn't finish the job uh, had her sister who had a legitimate tree that could be cut down on her front lawn. And so the uh, station attorney, uh, I said, well, is it okay if we have this uh, victim's sister call him and gas had spiked? Um, and what had happened was, so we called him out. It was a cold day and uh, the guy comes out finally. And then eventually, you know, it's TV. You come out with the cameras. Hi, excuse me, sir. Uh, I understand that uh, this nice lady over here says that you didn't uh, cut down, her, you cut down her tree, but you left the stump. Uh, well, okay, let's go over to, so we walk over to him with his car. Oh, my. And then at one point he says to me, Hey, you hit me. I said, I didn't hit you. And why would I swing at you? You know? <laughs> and then we got the camera going and clearly you can see, I made no contact and I'm not going to make any contact with a person. I'm not going to touch them. And, uh, so we went over to her house and he never shows up. You know, because I want to show them what you left. You took yeah. a couple of hundred bucks and then you didn't finish the job. <laughs> so, you know, we, we expose things and sometimes um, uh, got some money back for people. Yeah, uh, I, I just I remember just uh, and, and I was always uh, enamored with when I came over to two um, initially and, and your work ethic and uh your skill and and your you, you just you had that you had that it that was just always uh, one of those things that just attracted people to you um, thank you very much as we wind up uh, uh did you enjoy your time in in dayton Howard? oh absolutely yeah it is is howard nathan nathan your middle name perhaps no nathan is a made-up middle name Okay, I didn't know if it was. As I like to tell people, my parents were too poor that couldn't afford a middle name. <laughs> I didn't know if you, I didn't know if it had some type of significance, but I uh, well, well, it does. Um, I um, I once used that line in a conversation, a phone conversation with someone, and a woman believed me. She said, really? Wow. <laughs> that, that Your you background was that bad. Name. Yeah. But no, Nathan was um, a younger brother of my grandmother. That was his okay. first name. Okay. Yeah, so it, it does have significance. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I just, I wanted to, your name when I first started doing this a year ago was one of the first names on my list. I'm glad and, I can uh, check you off, or you can uh, check me off. Oh, and, and, and in fact, I, I think you're going to be one that I'm going to beg to have you back on because I have so many other things to talk to you about. So, okay. um, it, Howard, I certainly appreciate your time. Um, I, I exchanged notes with Mark Allen again today, and, and yeah. uh, 
uh, Jim Booker wanted me to tell you hi also. So, well, I tried. Uh, you got uh, a lot of folks here that uh, think the well, world of you. I um, uh, a couple of years ago, my daughter, uh, older daughter, uh, lives in Washington D.C., and the two of us drove uh, from Colorado uh, to Dayton. Uh, to to eventually get over to uh, Maryland, where she mm-hmm. would uh, hang for a little while, um, because my my uh, wife has a sister who lives in Silver Spring, Maryland, mm. or as I like to say, uh, they had a budget cutback, so it's only Silver Spring instead of Silver <laughs> Springs. Uh, anyway, uh, what happened was. Uh, uh, I stopped and uh, wound up. Uh, Marsha Bonhart put me up. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was nice. Uh, yeah. So Marsha knows about my health issue. I, I oh. recently conversed with uh, via email with um, with Mark, mm. um, and now you know, and uh, I think Tina Rezash knows. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a small number of people, and and wow. I, I've tried to keep it uh, quiet originally. Um, and I still had some initial hopes of getting back into the business after this uh, calamity. Um, but yeah, it's just time to move on. I, I understand that completely. And I, I uh, opening up about it is, uh, you know, with me is uh, I really, I was shocked, obviously, I and, but I, I'm uh, appreciative of uh, your honesty. Uh, I'm going to get back with you because I'd like to have you on again and, uh, okay. and talk TV. But man, what an inspirational piece that! Hey, gum, Howard, I, I just had no idea. I Thank had you gu- for you doing it. I yeah, I'll, I'll, it. I'll wrap this up really quickly. Um, yeah. uh, I take my uh, car to a, a local mechanic, and uh, the guy says to me, and he was very well-meaning, and, I, and he knew what had happened. And he said, uh, "Did they get it all?" I said. <laughs> I hope so. I'm thinking <laughs> if they're gonna if they're gonna take a section of your skull, put it off to the side, and get uh, the, the the surgeon said. I said uh, so. Uh, you pulled it out of my head. Uh, what did it look like? He said it looked like a big red grape. Oh my god! I said, well, what did you do do with it? Wow! And he said, so then he uses a highly technical medical term. He says I squished it. Oh no. <laughs> so I'm thinking <laughs> if, if they're going to do major surgery and open up your head and squish uh, it like a grape, right? They, they're they're going to get it all. You know, so they're not going to yeah. go back in. They're not going to leave something behind. So wow. Well, I'll, I'll leave you with that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, bless you. I appreciate it. And, and thanks again, Howard. I certainly appreciate your time. You take care. Have a good one. I'm going to send you a picture, by the way. Please do. Please send do. me your private email. I'll send it to you. Will do. All right, take care. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.